right, so um, I'm going to talk about uh, OneDrive forensics. Uh, basically, um, OneDrive is Microsoft's uh, cloud file solution, storage solution, and uh, it comes in two different flavors, uh, business and personal. Um, what I'm going to touch on is basically what if we don't have unified audit logs or anything related that's stored in the cloud? Uh, this can become particularly true with on the personal side because we're not going to have the unified audit logs anyways. So basically what is left on the endpoint that we can still grab data from? Quick intro on me um, about me. I'm a for analyst, uh, uh, SANS alumni. Um, I wrote OneDrive Explorer, which we're going to kind of touch on today. Uh, also did SEP parser. It, deals with um, semantic endpoint protection. Um, so if you're a semantic shop, I'd recommend checking that out. Uh, also did some stuff with for the X-ray in particular, uh, decrypting McAfee or McAfee and uh, uh, semantic uh, quarantine files. I also wrote a parse or a PCAP tool plugin for Procdot um, and a couple targets modules for Cape. And then, uh, you can find my information on Keybase and then the uh, GitHub for uh, OneDrive Explorer. Um, so the agenda for today, we're gonna cover a couple OneDrive artifacts uh, collection. Um, then we're gonna jump into OneDrive Explorer, uh, do some automation with Cape and a little lessons learned. And we're gonna touch on the log files a little bit. Um, so as a, as a warning, there might be a little spoiler alert with this too, uh, if you're taking the FOR 500, because uh, I borrowed the data from there just so I wasn't like exposing any personal data and stuff like that. So, but as far as the artifacts go, um, we have local files. Uh, so these would include like the, the default uh, location for your OneDrive uh, files. Um, you also have data stored in the register in the user's registry um under the so under software microsoft uh onedrive accounts and also in the sync engine provider uh sync engines provider um and we also have some metadata laying around in the uh users app data folders um first artifact i want to touch on is the tenants key and what this key does is it tracks um, the folders that are synced from other other sources. Uh, it's important to look at this location to find where on the endpoint all these files are stored because um, when they're shared out, they're not always in like the user's OneDrive or Dash, um, whatever company name it is, uh, they can be stored in other locations. And then for metadata wise, you have the user said that that file that's uh, stored in local Microsoft OneDrive settings, um, depending on if it's personal or business. Uh, so what this stores is local files, cloud files. Um, so if we run strings on it, it'll just dump out uh, just a list of the files and folders that, that are in OneDrive and there's you know no rhyme or reason to them on um, if they're like you know there's no folder structure to it so with this data um we can uh we know the default location um but in, in order to collect everything we need to check check the registry uh once we find all the uh, locations where the files are then we can uh, start our uh, OneDrive collection um, this starts to get complicated on multi-user systems because if the user wasn't logged in, their registry hive might not be mounted. So you'll have to run an initial collection, parse that data out, and then go back through and uh, collect all the files. Um, another issue is, is Microsoft uses a reparse point for storing their files. And what this means is not all the files are actually stored on the endpoint itself this uh this is used for saving space and and um 
The issue is if you try collecting against this reparse point, you can actually pull in more data in your collection um, that originally wasn't on the endpoint. Uh, so then you can run into your uh, scope of authority or, or even um, storage space issues. So let's rethink how we're doing this a little bit. Um, so if we go back to our uh, user SID, uh, that, that file, before, like before we ran strings on it and we get a list of files and folders. And I said, there's really no way of telling which file is under which folder or anything like that. If we actually open this file up in a hex editor, um, we can start to see different data structures. Uh, we can distinguish what is actually a file, what is, what is a folder. And then we can also get additional data um, like the drive item ID, parent ID, e-tags, um, folder names, hashes. And uh, so by pairing these drive item IDs back to their parent IDs, we can actually break this information out and rebuild the file and folder structure without having to collect uh, any additional files. So I'll show you quickly in OneDrive Explorer. Um, so basically, if you go to the settings and you go and you lo load the uh, user dot Sid that, that uh, the user said that that file. Um, once we get there down in the location, you'll see that it actually reconstructs the file structure quite quickly. A little bit more. Get that so as you can see, if we got the user folder, um, folders that were shared with uh, the user itself. Um, and you look on the on the right, you can see different uh, like the. Let's we'll, we'll skip that for now. But uh, you can see like the um, the uh, drive item IDs, things like that. Uh, the thing with the drive item IDs, looking back at at uh, um, Microsoft's documentation, you can see that this is a way of locating the files on the system or up in the cloud. So if we got that information, we can actually go back and query uh, OneDrive itself and and download any files that we need. Um, just as an example, like the slide presentation here, if you look in the uh, URL, you'll see that it, the, that the um, drive item ID is actually in the URL itself. Um, so instead of looking at the tenants key, what I'm gonna do is look at the sync engines. And um, so again, this identifies the default uh, local file storage. Um, and it also shows what's also shared with the user from different owners. But if you notice, the key name actually matches up with the drive item ID. So if we take this data, we can actually find the mount points in uh, OneDrive Explorer. So on the left is the original data that we parsed. If we add in the user's registry keys, now we have the actual uh, folder locations on, on the endpoint. Um, see, recycling bin. Uh, so this information, um, the deleted items are kept on, online in the recycling bin. Uh, they're 30, 30 days per personal. Uh, and they're kept for 93 days for business. Um, and if the files were actually on the endpoint itself, they'll appear in the re recycling bin on the file system. Um, so in OneDrive Explorer, we can actually take the end user, the recycling bin and we can actually incorporate this data in and pull out more information. I'm going way too fast. <laughs> so, so if we take this data, um, we go again, we can grab our uh, users, um, uh, user said that that file. As we get there again, load that in. And then we can also grab the user's registry. And we add in the recycling bin. So now if we look at the data, um, we can see that any of the files that were actually on the endpoint that were deleted 
uh, along with their hashes. And um, so then we can take those actual hashes and we can go back up and we can grab and uh, compare that back on the cloud to get um, our actual file. So all this is great, but then um, so automation, how do we how do we go about automating this? Um, without having to go back and doing multiple collections and and uh, parsing the data and then go back and pull back in what we need. So with CAPE, um, we can, uh, there's actual, all we need to do is grab the OneDrive metadata, the recycling bin, and the, re and the registry hives. Um, and then on the mod module side, uh, they built out for the command line version of OneDrive Explorer, it can do CSVs, JSONs, and HTMLs. So after running this data, um, depending on what, what we did, uh, this is just an example of the uh, output that we have. So, Lessons learned. Um, the key takeaways from this is um, we can find data from one or multiple sources. Um, so back to we can just grab the dat file, we can get that information in, or we can add in the user's registry plus the recycling bin to get a bigger, uh, bigger and more complete picture. Um, this eliminates multiple collections. Uh, it's easy to and it's easy to use on multiple user systems, and it also solves the the uh, scope or the storage and the scope of authority. Um, and it's also easy to automate. And down down below is just an example of the command line running. But there's one more thing. It's uh, what what about the log files? So these are the um, um, in the users app data local folder, uh, you have what are called ODL logs. Um, and this stores various information like the syncing of OneDrive, uh, user account linking, unlinking, uploading, download, loading. So pretty much anything that happens on the back end. Um, these files are actually obfuscated. Um, you guess, yeah, I'm probably gonna slaughter his name. You guess, uh, had back in February, I think it was, uh, created a parser to unobfuscate these files. And um, the way to unobfuscate them was in the obfuscation string map.txt file. Um, but unfortunately, a couple months later after he came out with this, Microsoft changed things up and this file no longer exists. Uh, now it uses um, some sort of encryption key that really hasn't been solved yet. Um, OneDrive Explorer does have an, kind of an experimental thing in it where it'll actually parse out the files. Uh, it's still a work in progress um, and it's based off of Yugesh's uh, um, original work. And this is just an example of running it against, uh, against a live system and, and uh, parsing out all the um, user logs for you to look at. And as a special thanks to the, these are the various people that kind of helped me along the way to figure this out. Um, and like I said, I went too fast, so this is about all that I have. So.